Hi, I'm Johnny Hart from Classic RegFit and today I'm going to be talking about our replacement alternators for Porsche 911, 964 and 993. I'm going to be going through our, our journey to develop these devices, um, some of the pitfalls um, that we encountered along the way, and looking at the original design of the alternators and explaining why you simply just can't rewind a standard alternator to produce more output in these cars. So uh, let's have a look at the original design and see what we've done to improve it. So let's do a recap on the what typically you find in a 911. So we have the fan housing, the alternator fits inside the fan housing and the fan fits on front of the alternator. So the pulley that's driving the fan is also directly driving the alternator and indeed the alternator spindle is also the spindle for the fan. So the very early cars have a 35, 40 amp alternator um, and then this went up to 55 and then 75 and then eventually to 90 amps with the 3.2 Carrera. In order to get the higher amperage they had to make the alternators longer so you'll find that the depth of the machining in the fan housing changes over the years. There's three different depths. This is actually a later 3.2 fan housing, and that's the deepest one uh, to accept the longest alternator, which is the 90 amp type. This fan housing is also the most fragile because it has most material machined away. The earlier ones have quite a thickness here, which, which makes them stronger. So when the alternator turns, it generates uh, a current and it also generates heat. Now this unit is living inside a fan housing. So you think, well, that's okay because it's got a fan and lots of air rushing by it. But what I find curious about the design is there's no internal fan in the alternator. And that when you put the main engine fan over on top of it, you're actually preventing any airflow moving through the alternator itself. And I think this is what these slots are about. These slots were added in later years with the higher output alternator to allow some air to go through the alternator because otherwise it's just going around it. This particular unit has an internal regulator um, the early units had an external regulator and those those are prone to failure. Uh, the typical symptoms are the battery voltage rises up, uh, which can cause all sorts of problems with other parts of the electrical system, uh, particularly the CDI unit fitted to, to the early cars. Now, if you want one of these alternators to produce more power, uh, it's actually fairly easy to do. You just um, put some more windings on, on the stator, which are these uh, copper windings in here. And then you'll find that when it rotates, it produces a higher peak output. Um, unfortunately though, it also produces more heat. Um, in testing, uh, we initially started our high output program by rewinding these units to 110 and 120 amps, uh, but uh, we we literally were, were catching catching fire to them. Uh, the um, the insulation on the windings was breaking down, leading to a short circuit, and the next thing you have is um, smoke, which isn't very clever in a magnesium fan housing. I can tell you that much. So here's one of the units in question. You can see that the windings have blackened. So this unit was wound for 110 amps and we had it on 80 amps continuous. It was absolutely fine when the engine was cool, uh, but after the engine got some heat soak, uh, it simply couldn't dissipate the heat. And that's because the poor thing is, is trapped inside inside this fan. And there's no, there's no fan inside this so it, it literally it, it cannot dissipate the heat so you can see the blackened windings in there and that ultimately led, led to the failure of the unit so this is why I, I, I dispute anybody who's selling 
an alternator in this style of case that is outputting more than 100 amps. I will agree that it can output more than 100 amps, but whether it can last in the heat of an engine bay, I very much doubt it. We had to start again. So this is an old style case. So how do we go about designing a high output alternator? So how does an alternator work? Um, essentially, when you spin the shaft, there's a, a magnet which spins round and this passes around a coil. So the coil is fixed, magnet spins. And as the magnet passes the coil, it induces a current in it. Now, in most uh, old school and even some modern alternators, there are three coils of wire which are referred to as phases. So this is a three phase alternator. And typically you can identify these because they have three pairs of diodes. Um, the diodes are used to rectify, which is essentially like smoothing um, the phases into a DC current. Um, without the rectifier, this would be an AC current, so it'd be like a sine wave. And the three together would be producing voltages that move up and down like a, like a wave. Uh, so these diodes basically smooth that out. Um, but in that process, there is some energy wasted and that, that, that energy is turns into heat. So this is our modern replacement alternator. And the first thing to notice is that it has six phases instead of three. So it has six coils of wire inside it and I don't know if you can see but that means it has 12 diodes so there's a pair there two four six eight ten twelve having six phases means that the alternator is essentially more efficient and one of the advantages of efficiency is that you produce less heat uh, in addition to that, this alternator has uh, holes for cooling and the biggest improvement is that it has an internal fan. So it's no longer at the mercy of um, currents of air produced by the back end of that fan. It actually has its own fan to draw air through it. So these alternators uh, originated from the need to have um, immediate power available in stop-start vehicles. So when vehicles started to have the stop-start systems, which cuts the engine, you know, when you stop, uh, they needed to recuperate the battery charge very, very quickly. So I think that's where the development of these came around. This is a, based on Denso internals. Uh, Denso have a patent on the way they wind the stator which is referred to as the uh, hairpin stator so I don't know if you can see in there but there's the grey things they're, they're actually covered in epoxy they look a bit like hairpins or bobby pins I think they're called in the US um, and that's a patented design so this is a well proven unit these are fitted to Range Rover, Jaguar products, uh, millions of these in service. Um, but the bulk of the work has been adapting this to fit in the 911 fan housing. One of the advantages of having six phases instead of three is that the output is greatly improved at low RPM. So just to give you some comparison, The top of the range 3.2 alternator unit is rated 90 amps but can only produce between 35 and 40 amps at idle. This alternator is rated at 175 amps but can produce 75 amps at idle. So that's the biggest difference. This is 35 amps to 75 amps at idle speed.
The development of this alternator has been done in conjunction with uh, WASP here in the UK. Um, so they designed the, the billet, lovely billet housing. And the length of the alternator is the same as the early alternator. So this will fit on a fan housing up to and including uh, 1973. So that's all the long hood cars. And this will fit straight on. For the later cars, we supply adapter rings. So these are used to take up the space in the machine part of the fan housing. So you need a 10 millimeter one if you're running a, a mid-year car up to an, an SC. And if you've got a 3.2 or a late turbo, you need 21 millimeters. So it's a 10 millimeter and an 11 millimeter. These come in the kit with the alternator. And we also supply all our alternators with a set of high output cables. So these cables are rated for 175 amps. And you don't really want to be installing these on the original cable set, otherwise you will potentially uh, melt the um, melt the cables in the car. Right, so let's see if we can put this thing together. So I fitted the, because I've got a 3.2 fan housing, I fitted both the trim rings to the alternator. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I fit the lamp spur here, which is the longest in a position that matches this, uh, I like to call it the snout, this sort of nose area of the um, of the air deflector. So this is stand apart. I think that's actually an SC one, but it doesn't matter for the sake of this demonstration. So we fit the alternator. So I've taken the Woodruff key, which is the uh, Part that fits into this slot on the alternator shaft. I've taken it out just so that I can sh easily take the fan on and off. Um, when these are in the fan can be quite tight to, to push down there so I've just taken that out for this uh, demonstration. So here we have our fan. This should push slot down nicely into place. Fan should turn freely. And you can verify the um, the correct depth of the fan with a straight edge. So if you put it on this part here, you should find that the uh, the straight edge doesn't touch the fan housing, and the gap at, at this point here and this point here is approximately one millimeter. So that's perfect. We obviously have some shims and uh, the other half of the the fan pulley, uh, but. Just to show you the other side quickly. So this is the bottom of the fan with the mark. So if we remember that, turn that over. So we've got the longest um, electrical connection here in line with this uh, longer part of the air deflector. So again, that, that would go onto the uh, studs like that. And then the cable set that we provide, you can't really connect it wrongly because we've just made the sizes of the terminals um, relate to their connection. So you, this will only go on this one. I mean, okay, that would go on that, but then you discover that this one would not go on this one so yeah we've got the minus and the and the positive there obviously make sure that these are tight and that these bodies are insulated from one another uh, we usually provide some uh, heat shrink for the for the body of the um, terminal and the other connections are for the ignition lamp which goes to Surprisingly, the one mark lamp, and there are some other um, ground points on the original harness which should also connect uh, to here. And 
some additional positive feeds that connect to the battery plus. So there you have it, that's our 911 um, alternator, 175 amp, 75 amps at idle. It's a great improvement to, uh, to the electrical system on the car and it's a perfect complement to our AC system, uh, allows it to run cooler uh, at idle and uh, generally you can um, get a much better cooling experience with this alternator fitted. So here we have the 964-993 set up, uh, fan housing, fan, pulleys. Uh, this is the original alternator. Now this is a 115 amp unit, but being a three phase design, it still only puts out around about 40 amps at idle. Uh, it's interesting that Porsche realized the, the need for a fan on the alternator itself. So at the back there is a fan, an impeller and uh, an air deflector plate. Uh, our replacement unit is uh, higher output than our 911 unit. This, this is actually a 240 amp unit. Yep, 240 amps this can output at peak. It has an idle output of over 100 amps. So if you've got um, additional electrical equipment or, or RAC on the car, this, this will solve all of your electrical issues. Now the standard 964 and 993 have twin pulley set up, but some of the RS models, or all of the RS models, and some conversions, uh, some engine builders convert to a single pulley. Um, for that reason, we provide a, a split uh, adapter ring here. So you use both of these in a standard 964 and just a single one if you have a single pulley or an RS. So I hope you enjoyed that journey of discovery, the challenges that we face developing these alternators. If you'd like to see more technical videos like this, uh, please subscribe and like the channel and we'll see you next time.